an amazing actor. What range he has, he played a Jedi Knight in Star Wars, a heroin addict in Train Spotting, and in the recent Marley and Me, he played the Labrador Marley. <laughs> Such a great performance, no one knew. Criminally overlooked at the Oscars. Please welcome Ewan McGregor. <laughs> Like many of you, I'm a little bit in love with you and McGregor. <laughs> Look at that cheeky face and the little sparkly eyes and the hair all tufty on top, like a little boiled egg with parsley growing out on top. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, okay. <laughs> You and great to see you here. Thanks for joining us once again. It's a great it's pleasure nice to have you on the show. Nice well, to be here. well, what have you been doing? You've been working. Is it well? You've just finished filming with Roman Polanski. Yeah. Uh, that must be quite something. And he's yeah. one of the greats. I know a real a real uh, master film filmmaker. Yeah. We were shooting in Berlin since January. We finished this morning at five in the morning. You just finished today. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. We started with a twenty. The first day with Roman Polanski, we went on set and we finished shooting that day twenty-two hours later. Ooh. And he's seventy. Eight, well, 75, just, 78 or something. Did he forget that they, you were meant to go to bed <laughs> or something? <laughs> just <laughs> relentless, relentless, <laughs> relentless amounts of energy. Wow. And then we shot for three and a half months and then finished with another 20-hour marathon wow. last night. What's the film? Who's in it with you? What's it about? It's called The Ghost and it was a, a, it was a, it's a novel about the ghostwriter of the recently retired British Prime Minister. And, um, and uh, I play the ghostwriter. So Tony Blair, Pierce story about Tony Blair? Uh, He's called I, Adam Lang, is the Prime Minister. A smiley Labour yeah. MP yes. who dragged us into an unnecessary and unwanted that, war. That kind of... <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed to who say that. Uh, to be, yeah. Perhaps have been involved in some war crimes yeah. and capturing people wow. to torture them on behalf of the Americans. And so, um, yeah. It's one of those, it's a kind of, is it a thriller then? It's, it's a, a human a drama? Or... I think it's a, a political thriller. Uh, where do you live now? Do you live over here? You're back over here? Or are you living in the I States? I moved to um, the States last year. How last summer. There? In the Los Angeles, is this? Yes. Good. I've, I've barely been there since we moved. I've had a house there for a long time, and um, we decided to go and live in it for a bit. For and a how, the, how are the kids adjusted? How are they, they love it? it. Yeah, they love it. Yeah, they love it. Uh, do they go to a school? Uh, is like a Spanish-speaking school? Because I, I, friends of mine moved out there, and the school had people spoke like equal parts Spanish to uh, what well, English, but it's American, really, I suppose. Right. No, they don't oh. do that. No. <laughs> maybe he went to a different school. Also, I've realised he is Spanish, so that would well, maybe be... Uh... He to, maybe, maybe he went to one of those Spanish schools. That's what he probably did. Do you know I just what I mean? got excited thinking about it. I'm no, sorry. they do love it. it, it they do love it. It's, it's, um, it's quite nice to just have decided to live somewhere else. I just yeah. thought I would always live here, and I, I love London, but I, since I've been back now and again, I've come back as a visitor, you know, and... I've, I've seen it in a different way. And do you, do you appreciate nice. it more? You enjoy yeah, it Yeah, I went to an art gallery and saw some plays and stuff. Isn't and that weird? Did things that visitors do, you know. Yeah, you don't do the things. And when you go to New York or something, this is a great city, there's so much theatre, there's so yeah. many great restaurants. You think, oh, we've got them all, we just yeah, don't use them. We just them. don't go, yeah. Uh, let me ask you about working with Tom Hanks. I had him on the show last week. Man, he's a difficult guest. He hardly Tricky. said a word. It was hard to get anything <laughs> Not very out of funny, I found. <laughs> really humorless. He's a, he's a dream uh, to and be he's around. lovely. It must be fun working with him. Yeah, absolutely. And he and Ron Howard, who have worked together on four or five films before, yeah. have got a real, a, a really lovely working relationship together and a, and a, and a good friendship. And they make the... The set was just a great fun place to be because, uh, because this is this is the movie Angels and Demons. It's just uh, come out over here. It's great fun. It's a great fun, yeah, film, like good, big, silly blockbustery film. Yeah. I loved it. Um, but you play uh, now you play a Catholic priest. Yes. But not uh, you, but you're an Irish Catholic priest. Yeah. In Italy. Yeah. Now, I haven't read the book, but in the book, I believe he was an Italian Catholic yeah. priest in Italy, which kind of makes a bit more sense. <laughs> so now There what, are Irish uh, Catholic I'm priests. I'm sure there's though. one or two, but is your Italian accent so bloody awful? <laughs> <laughs> I bet it did. Was it first day no. filming? Did you went, went, hey, what's the mark? And we went, no, no, no. Let's try it again. Hey, poppy, 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 poppy. Maybe he could be Irish. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's make him Irish. <laughs> is no, that what, what happened? Ron wanted him to be Irish from the beginning. I think the, 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 he's the character that's changed the most from the book. And, um, and I think it was to tidy up his backstory. And they made him um, uh, an orphan. that He got orphaned in, in Italy and was, uh, was adopted by the... The, a cardinal who became the Pope. Well, it makes it, I mean, it kind of makes the film work, the fact he's what happened to him in the past. Right. It makes some sense right. of it. So I can see why they, why they did that. Yeah. Uh, but you weren't filming, you didn't film that much of your stuff no. in Italy, is that why? None of it. Well, no, I did film a, well, a couple of days in a place called Caserta. 
And I'd been shooting in, uh, I'd been shooting a film uh, in Louisiana at the time. And my family had come over and they'd spent a, a couple of, uh, two weeks with me. And then I had to go over to Rome, to, uh, to Caserta, to start filming Angels and Demons. And um, I said to my wife, it sounded like a lovely place, Caserta. In fact, they told me that they shot some of the stuff from Star Wars in there. And there's a palace. So I, I remembered that stuff in Star Wars. And absolutely beautiful, the lake and the castle. And I forgot that George Lucas created all of that on a keyboard <laughs> afterwards, you know. Because the palace is in the middle of the biggest shithole you've ever seen. <laughs> uh, it's like part of the sprawling suburb of Naples. So my wife arrives on a plane from London. I arrive there and we're being driven towards this <laughs> horrible place for a... Anyway, we had a nice time all the same. Uh, so uh, I did... <laughs> how long were you filming Italy there for? Not hardly Two or three days, yeah. that was it. And all my stuff was done in L.A. Because the, the Vatican wouldn't allow us to film inside any Vatican buildings. But, you know, because, it's quite respectful of Catholicism, I thought, the film yeah. was. I think it seems to me like you're, you're deliberately not treading anyone's toes no, in that respect. No, I think so. I mean, I think it's a hangover from the Da Vinci Code, where the, where the Vatican were upset with Dan Brown's book and, 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 the, and the movie. But really, there, I, I, don't, I don't think there's... Um, there's an, ele an element of anti-Catholicism or anti-Christianity no, or anything. I, I, well, we've in got fact, the opposite. Maybe. We're going to clip. We're going to show them which includes that. Before we do that, there's one thing you and McGregor fans will be somewhat disappointed. This is one of the uh, handful of movies that you've made in a long career and a, uh, you said, face it, you know, a, a varied and interesting career in which you actually managed to keep your clothes on all the way through. <laughs> um, and most of us, I think, you know, we look forward to thinking it's a, it's a you and McGregor that got a very so bizarre, that's a, isn't people it, that well because they like seeing, seeing they like seeing. <laughs> I just like the way you introduced the question with the word handful. <laughs> it's interesting that you did that, maybe even subconsciously. But, but, this, is, uh, but this does not mean that you're, you're putting it away forever. I'm, I'm no, sure no, 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 no. No, 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 no. If the part demands? Exactly that. No confines, no, no, no limits. But you're you know? pretty relaxed about being on a show. I don't mind. Listen, I think that acting is about... Is a rep it, you know, movies, they're stories, they represent life. And in life, we're naked at least twice a day. Yeah. Have you ever been to a nudist colony? No. Yeah. No, I haven't. Have you? I have. You want to watch out. When you sit down, you need to put a towel down first. <laughs> or else I get cross with you. We didn't realise we were filming there. And we all sat down and no one put a towel down and someone looked over disapproving. Then when we stood up, I realised why, because it was a plastic set. Went... <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a little... It was like the two-inch shroud where we were <laughs> sitting. <in the> <laughs> oh, that is apparent. Now, that would be disrespectful, wouldn't it? We better tell yes. you. OK, uh, let's have a look at a clip. This is uh, Ewan in uh, Angels and Demons. It's great fun. It's out now. Here it is, and this is great, because it's a scene between you and Tom Hanks, so we okay. see the two of you working together. <laughs> That's a great scene, isn't it? You must be pleased with that. Good scene, yeah. Nice. Nice. It's nice. Um, now, let me... Uh, here, I've got an interesting thing here. Uh, recently, I've been watching the television, and I see adverts of you riding around your bike, looking quite handsome, chiselled, steely-eyed, and so on and so forth. And then you go, adventure. The smell of this thing the is smell adventure. Of the adventure. And this is the perfume you're doing. Yes. Now, uh... <laughs> yes, I've got no. a scent. I'm yeah. advertising a perfume. Uh, what does it smell like? I've never smelt the, uh, the adventure. It smells of the rugged outdoors. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you wear it yourself, Ewan? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for how long do, will you be... Will you have to keep wearing it? I'm going to you... be wearing it for the next two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen... <that's> a... <laughs> Hey, I've got to ask you, before we move on, and we've got, uh, we've got Eminem to come, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be chatting in before we I'm very excited. Before we do, what's the... Uh, you've been making a movie with Jim Carrey. And yeah. I, I, this sounds really uh, quite an extraordinary film. Yes. Uh, it's called... Uh, is it called I Love You? It's called you? I Love You, Philip Morris, and uh, it's a tr the true story of two men who um, meet and fall in love in prison. And... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's funny about but that? It's, but it's not, it's not a comedy, though, is exactly. it? Exactly. Um, no, well, it is a comedy, but right. uh, it's not a comedy because of that. It's, the... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a comedy because of that. It's, um, it's, it's a story of an extraordinary con man, Stephen Russell, who Jim plays, and um, his kind of uh, he, he he escaped from Texas prisons like four or five times, and uh, in between times he was. Um, uh, in a cell with his boyfriend Philip Morris, and so he escaped to be with him, or he just he escaped, escaped him? and then and then pretended to be a lawyer and got Philip Morris released, and oh. then they went on this great big gay bender around Miami, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> got got an enormously in debt, and he started insurance scams and everything, and then ended up getting Philip Morris thrown back into prison, it's, and it, and then he goes through this extraordinary, he f he fakes his own death, he fakes. Uh, the fact that he's dying of AIDS and to the point where he gets released from prison and this is a true story um, Because they think he's next to death 
and uh, he just starved himself till, till he was almost passed away. And then they released him. He, he, he made a phone call pretending to be a doctor, looking for someone in the very late stages of uh, AIDS uh, for an experiment. And the prison just released him to this doctor. And, um, and, uh, and, and he managed to get back to see Philip. Well, you know what? A, we don't need to go and see it now. But B, <laughs> uh, what an extraordinary story. And it sounds yeah. like a story movie. Have you seen it? Is it finished? Yeah, we had it in Sundance. It's great. It's really good. Uh, it's always such a pleasure having you here. I um, can't wait to see the, the, that movie in particular. It sounds fascinating, the Jim Carrey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Angels and Demons, I saw it. I loved it. So thanks for that. Great, Great to have you here. Ewan McGregor, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. <laughs>